Hello all. Today we will be talking about the select node, which is an absolute superstar node that everyone should know if you're using Unreal Engine 5's blueprint. And we'll use it to select a scale value, a color value for our player, and also use it to select different text options. Let's jump in. All right, let's jump in. File, new level, basic, and let's create our assets. In a new folder, we're going to create three assets. I'll right click, say new blueprint class of type actor. I'll call this BP underscore color change zone. I'll right click, create a new material, and I'll call this M underscore color material. I'll right click one more time and I will go to blueprint enumeration and I will call this E color material name. For context, we will create a series of zones in which we will walk into and when we enter, it will change the player's material color and change their scale and also display text uh, exclaiming what color they are. Okay, let's start with our material. I'll double click on my material to open it. I will hold the three button and left click to create a vector three parameter as a shortcut, or I can right click and say constant three vector. I like to use the shortcut for one left click, two left click, and three left click to create these quickly. I'm going to right click this vector three and say convert to parameter. I will call this color and I will drag this RGBA value into my base color. I'll use that shortcut from before, which is holding one and left click to create a scalar value. And I will change this to 0.8 and I will plug this into my metallic and my roughness. Let's save this. Now let's add some values to our enumerator that we created. I'll dock this up here, go to my map. I will control space to bring up my content drawer and let's open up our enumerator. So these are the values that I'll set from outside, which is effectively a string, but it's something I can use as a drop down menu to choose the value that I want. So let's add some values. I'll click add enumerator and I'll call this uh, lightning blue. I'll call this lime green. I'll call this safety orange. And I'll call this ruby red. Great, let's save this. Now let's add some, some logic to our blueprint. I'll control space to bring up my content drawer and I'll double click into my blueprint. We're going to add two components to our blueprint. In the top left, I'll click add, and I will type box collision. I'll select this, and I will also add a cube. This is just for a visual so that we can see where the zone is. So I'll set this to four in the scale. So four in the X, four in the Y, and I'll change this to point 0.1. Now I'll select my box, and I'll change the box extent to 200, 200, 100 in the Z, and then I will move it 100 in the Z. These are the only two components we'll need for this blueprint. I will also actually add a text render, and I will move it up, and I will change the horizontal alignment in the details panel to center and the vertical alignment as well to center. And I will change the world size to 52. All right, let's save our blueprint. Now let's add some code. In our event graph, which is where all of our blueprint logic will take place, I will right click on our box, which we can call collision volume so that you understand the difference between that and the cube, which is just a mesh. I'll right click, go down to add event, 
and say add on component begin overlap. This is the event that will take place when our character overlaps the box or any other actor. So I will test that actor by pulling off and saying cast to character. Make sure that you're more often than not casting to a C++ class and not a blueprint class for memory performance. And now if this is a character, what we're going to do is we'll say get mesh, which will be the character mesh on that blueprint. And I'll say get num materials, which is the number of materials in the mesh. Then I will say for loop and make sure that we'll pull this off by uh, control left clicking to pull this off and dragging this into last index. Make sure it's not in the first index. We'll drag this into the for loop. And now what we're going to do is create a series of dynamic materials from our values. So off of our for loop, what we're going to do is we're going to say create dynamic material instance. We'll grab, we'll go back up to our color material. And so we can either browse to it using this magnifying glass or just use control space to bring up the content drawer. And I'll make sure it's selected here and I'll use this left arrow to add it in this location. Now I will pull off this and say set vector parameter value. The color that we set here as our parameter to change from blueprint is color. So I'll type color. And now I'm going to grab this mesh again and I'll say set material. And I'll drag this in here. And then I'm going to pull this index into here and then this material into here. And now what we need to do is figure out what color value do we want to set. So let's add a variable for our enumerator. I'll click down here under variables and say uh, material color choice. And I'll make this of type E color material name. I'll drag this out and I'll say get. I'll also make this visible so that I can select it from the environment, for instance. Now I'm going to use my first select node. So I will say select. And basically what this allows me to do is I can put any type of variable in here. So any, it could be a color, it could be a string, it could be a scale, a float, uh, a blueprint, uh, you know, it could be any different type of, of variable that exists here, basically. And we can feed this in somewhere else. So I'm going to drag this into my value over here, and it's going to know, okay, I want a color. So I'll click uh, the, the little box, and that will bring up my color palette. I'm going to change this to a lightning blue. I'll change this to a lime green. I'll change this to a safety orange. And I'll change this to a ruby red, something like that. Awesome. So now, uh, because I have this, the eyeball on means that it's visible in the environment. So if I drag out a series of my blueprints, I will be able to select per instance what color I want. So this one will make the player turn lime green. This one safety orange, this one ruby red, and this one lightning blue. Before we test, let's jump to our material quickly. In, uh, if, let's click out into the uh, environment here, and we need to enable one important thing, which is used with skeletal mesh. If this is not set to true, it will not work. So let's go to our environment, and I'm going to run into the box. And you'll see now I'm blue, now I'm green, now I'm orange, and now I am ruby red. Let's add just a little bit more logic. Let's go back to our blueprint. And I will right click. Actually, I'll drag off my mesh. And I'll say set world scale 3D. Drag that in. 
drag off here. And let's copy our enum with control C and control V. I will say select again. We're gonna get three total uses of the select node in this blueprint. And so now I have the choice to give it a scale. So because I want a uniform scale, I'm going to say float to vector conversion by pulling off and saying float and then using to vector. And so let's just copy and paste this four times with control C and control V. I'm gonna drag these in here. And I'll say lightning blue is the smallest at points, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 for lime green, one, and then let's say 1.25 for ruby red. So each time I enter, it will change the world scale of the player. And let's test that out. I'm going to right click in my environment and say play from here. I'm going to overlap. You'll see I shrink and I'm going to get gradually bigger with each material I choose and the other way. So this will work in any direction and is another use of the select node. Let's add one more. All right, back in my blueprint, I'm going to add some information for our text render actor. So this is the text we added before. And what we want to do on event, event begin play, let's pull off and say set, actually, we'll say set visibility and make this false. Let's actually add a, let's say right click and then type add custom event. And let's say hide text, drag this into here. On event begin play, I'll call that event, say hide text, so that we can use this el elsewhere. And so we're saving on some code. So I added this comment by selecting and pressing the C button. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this value after we overlap. So after I complete running the loop on the materials of our mesh, I'm going to take my text and I will set visibility to true. So I'm gonna make it visible so the player can see it. And then I'm going to say set timer by event. Say create event by pulling off the event dispatcher. I'm going to hide the text after 1.5 seconds. And let's set the text value. So on begin play, I'm going to say set text off of this. And we'll use a select to choose what text value we want to place in here. So let's get our enum. I'm going to select it, control C, control V, or I can drag it off from my variables panel, whichever works for you. And I'm going to pull off and I'll say select. And I'm going to pull off here and say append string. And so now it knows I want a string when it's connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this into here and I'm going to add a pin. I'm going to take my enum and I'll pull off and I'll say enum to string. I'm going to drag this into here and then I'm going to put an exclamation point. So for each thing, what I'm going to say is I'm going to append three text values. I'm going to say like a prefix or something to start the sentence. That's like, wow, uh, uh, your mesh is space. And then it will say lightning blue exclamation point. And then I, th for green, I'll say, I can't believe you are, then it'll say green. This one will say, nice, you are. This will say, holy cow, you are space. And so all of these have a space at the end of it. I could, if I wanted to add, you know, like I did here with this exclamation point and just, you know, add a fourth value, but I'm just going to do it in here. I'll drag this into here. And I'm going to make this tidy. I'll add a custom event. And I'll say uh, set text value. I'll drag this in here. 
I'll add a comment around this. S set text. And then at the beginning, I will set text. Set text value. Awesome. Let's test this out. In our map, I'll fly to this side so I'm oriented properly. When I right click, I'll enter and I'll say, nice, you are safety orange. Holy cow, you're ruby red. And it will show the text value for each, showing it for the amount of time I specified and then hiding it. I hope you found this video useful and make great use of the select node in your own blueprints. Stay tuned for more Unreal Engine 5 content and tutorials. Have a great day.